Hi, and welcome to Underground Video Network. Uh, Mike here is with me always is Richard. Hello. And uh, if you can't tell by the t-shirts, we have a certain theme going on for today's show. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Green Lantern movie. Right, it just came out. Uh, for, for us, it just came out uh, last week. Yeah. And also we're going to be talking about... Um, what they're doing with the, the reboot at DC Comics. So, like I said, as you can tell... You can see there's a theme going on, so uh, stay tuned and uh, we'll uh, let we'll you know right what we back. thought. Hi, and uh, I think we're going to start off the show. Uh, there's been a lot of comic book movies that are coming out and have come out. Right. But one that kind of stuck out for us was the uh, the Green Lantern movie. It's the newest style as we tape this. Yep. <laughs> already, it's it's already gotten a lot of publicity. Not all good. Right. Mostly not very good. <laughs> uh, the truth is, I'll be honest. I liked it. Here's my official review. I I liked it. It was okay. It was a little choppy on the editing, which bugged me. Yeah. I think what a lot of it's 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 gotten a lot of bad criticism and a lot of bad publicity. Right. I don't think it's warranted. I don't think enough people really gave it a fair chance. I think, honestly, like we were talking earlier, I think a lot of the critics killed it before it came out. Right. It, well, yeah, they just didn't know how to take this, I don't think. No, uh-uh. And it seemed weird because they were, they were going on about how Green Lantern's not well-known enough amongst the normal non-comic book. True. True. But, I mean, Thor had that same hurdle to jump and... But Thor was a whole other different movie. Yeah, Thor... Let's don't go there. Let's yeah. don't compare Thor to this movie. Because no. Thor was a total total different movie. Yeah. It was, it was it was more for a populace, where I still don't think Green Lantern was quite written for a populace. No. It was a geek love movie. Yeah, it was. And I think that's where the critics are bashing, because it was written for Green Lantern fans. Right. And I think you had two sets of people. You had the, the diehard Green Lantern fans... Who really don't like this? Who really don't like this because it wasn't what they expected. I think they thought it was going to be more. Yeah, this was more written for a comic fan. Yeah, who may not read Green Lantern. Who right. Might want to pick up something that might be coming down the pike. Right. Who or knows? as a or as a casual Green Lantern fan who, okay, I know he's Hal Jordan. I know about the ring. You know, yeah, I know yeah, through, yeah. you know the Justice League books. You know, I'm not a diehard fan. And I think that's what it was. I think a lot of the criticism came from the diehards who didn't think it lived up to expectations. It did. It didn't. And uh, and the other thing was, I even talked to some in between twenty um, somethings who really thought John Stewart should have been in this movie. Yeah, or, I mean, really should have been the Green Lantern because that's the Green Lantern they grew up with. So, right. So you're talking an older cra uh, crowd who is Hal Jordan fans. Mm -hmm. Then you have your John Stewart. Then your Guy Gardner's. Then your Kyle Reiner's. Yeah. And this movie just kind of wanted to set the start, which is Hal Jordan. Which, yes, which exactly. was how it really should have started, in my mind. Yeah, to start with any of the other characters, because for a while when the, the, the talks of the Green Lantern movie first came out, I mean, years ago, this was back when Hal was still MIA, and a lot of people wanted to see Kyle Rainier as the character of the movie, because that's who, at the time, they knew. Right. But now, being at Hal's back, he's been back for a while it, it was yeah. foolish to go with anybody else well I think the whole thing was with what Jeff Loeb was doing yes he, he was writing a real strong Hal Jordan yes the comic world had accepted this new interpretation mm. this was a reboot it relaunched it was gone and then of course he was involved with the movie yeah. which I think is the only part that even saved this movie yeah. if he wasn't involved with this movie this would have really really tanked right because it, it had his flair about it in certain parts in certain parts yeah I thought that it stuck pretty fairly accurate to the the origin of Hal Jordan. Right. I, I really did. I they didn't go off on some big far weird tangent. I thought it stuck to the story. I thought it stuck to the history pretty well. I liked it for what it was. It was a good fun summer blockbuster co uh, comic book movie. Right. I took it for what it. I took it at face value for what it was. That's what it was. It yeah. was to have go in, have a little fun, enjoy it. Yeah, you're done, and then yeah. there might be a sequel. Oh yeah, but I've talked to to many a person who really hadn't picked up a comic book, who have been impressed by the the string of comic book movies. You know, your Iron Man, Thor's, all of them. Who who really enjoyed it? I mean, they'd never picked up a comic book movie. This was the first time they'd heard the words Hal Jordan or. Oa or Kilowog that just, you know, while they were watching it, really enjoyed it. And that was why I didn't understand why 
The critics bashed it the way they did. Well, they're critics. Well, true. <laughs> yeah. Because I'll be honest with you, this was the first in a long time when I went to see it at the theater. I saw, you know, little kids who enjoyed it. I heard cheerings and I heard squeals and I heard yeah. I really did. And I'm looking around and it's just like a, a huge genre of people, you know, young and old, who just, I don't know if it was just that certain theater at that certain day just happened to get all the people who liked it. But I, I, I really did. I was surprised by how bad the critics have bashed this movie. Well, they're bashing cars too, so that's true. <laughs> uh, if and I ain't seen that. So. Yeah, my thing is, I very much enjoyed it. I, I thought the CG was good. Yeah, the CG was nice. Because um, th that was like I said, they, the critics were killing it before the movie came out. Because one of the big controversies was the costume. Yeah, it's like digital. oh, the digital costume. Oh, it looks so bad. It looks so cheesy. Oh, it worked. It worked. Yeah, it really did, and it. I think if they went any other direction in like spandex or something, no, it just there was no way they could not have done it CG at at all. Of course, like I saw an interview with uh, Blake Lively, she had a hard time filming her scenes with him because he's wearing this black with like spotted uniform yeah. instead of the Green Lantern. So I bet that would have been hard to film. Yeah, um, I liked the stuff with Abin Sir. Yeah, that was good. I liked all the small Easter eggs for the fans, you know. Like I said, you know, the diehard fans didn't like too much of it. Did it have its flaws? Yeah. Oh, yeah, definitely. Was it, you know, uh, you know, Batman Begins or The Dark Knight? No. No, it didn't set that bar. But was it still enjoyable? Will I buy it on Blu-ray when it comes out? Yeah. Yeah. And I think that the big thing that, you know, we're trying to get across is if you're a diehard fan and you're reading all these really bad reviews and everything... At least it wasn't Spider-Man 3. <sighs> no, it wasn't. And it wasn't Jonah Hex. It wasn't Daredevil. It wasn't Electra. Ghost Rider. It wasn't <laughs> Elektra. It was more along the lines, I would say, of Spawn. Yeah. I really enjoyed Spawn. Yes, I did too. And they did good interpretation of the character. Yeah. And that's what I think happened here. They did a good interpretation of the character. It worked for the movie. Yes, it did. It was a movie interpretation of Green Lantern. Yeah. And I did like how... You you, you got to give them props. I liked how DC's kind of taken a a, a note from the Marvel movies. <laughs> I think they actually did it a little cleverer though, because watch through the credits. I like that they they did a little Easter egg, you know, a little, you know, hang around through the credits to see, you know, a nice little bonus scene. But they did. No, didn't, Samuel L. Jackson didn't appear. No, not Samuel L. <laughs> Jackson. But it also they didn't make me wait until the very, 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 very oh, yeah. end. They did the credit. A team approach. They had yeah. to a little sooner. <laughs> yeah, because it was like I love the stuff that Marvel does, but it's also sometimes it's like I just sat through 15 minutes worth of. Did uh, you stay through all of it just in case? I did not. There was a hardcore group of us. We literally stayed through it. Only because I had gone like a day or two you after. You know what's there? At, oh, Have read, you heard? Read the comic books. Yes. Read the comic Here's books. What it is. Read the graphic novels. Read the Go graphic read novels. The novels. Yeah. <laughs> it was a nice little, you know, like, that's what I'd heard. I'd heard, stay through the credits, but not all the way through. And I liked that, that, that and I hope DC, yeah, it's a blatant rip up of what Marvel's doing, but at least that was the one thing that well, they did. other movies are doing it. Oh, yeah. They're, Pr Prana did it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, you know, and that was a total waste. Don't stay through the credits for Piranha. No. But that's, I digress. <laughs> but no, I, if you're, if you're a fan or you're somebody that, you know, is interested in watching any of those kind of movies, don't, don't listen to the critics, man. Go on your gut. Go, go for the right reasons. Go in with a level expectation. And I think you're going to be, you know, pleasantly surprised. One of the best things for me is, um, uh, how do I put this? My wife is not a comic book person. So I like going to movies with her because she's coming into it with fresh eyes. Mm. I like being able to go into a movie like Thor, Spider-Man, Tron, Green Lantern. Yes, I love her because she will actually go and see those movies with me. But she goes in with fresh eyes. You know, she doesn't go in with 20 to 30 years of baggage, you know, knowing <laughs> the Guardians every little move. And I get to see the movie from, uh, from fresh eyes, and she liked it. She really Possible. did. She really did. And it had... About that much to do with the fact that she, you know, it's Ryan Reynolds, come oh. on. I mean, you know, it's the same reason why she really did like Thor, too. It was a really good movie, but that, you know, a big, blonde, hunky dude, you know, that was that was the snag to get her to go. But she left the movie enjoying it, and she left the movie enjoying Green Lantern. And I get the feeling if you give it a chance, you're going to, too. If you take it for face value for what it is, summer, fun, sci-fi blockbuster, right. you're, you're going to walk away impressed and happy with it. And the special effects were good. I did. I, I liked... 
I mean, the green. Oh, you know, the, they the really. The power stuff. That's the, that was the big reason why we've had to wait 20 some years yeah. for Green Lantern movie it's, because. Did you ever see how they used to do it on TV? Oh, <laughs> with the big foamy mask and the. Oh, God, those were. And that's actually available now through Warner Brothers on yes. direct to DVD buying. Um, go to Warner Brothers website. You can find some of them old classics. Yeah, the JL, the JLA as, with, yeah, with, with the, Guy Gardner and Ice and wow. <laughs> oh, there I digress again. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, I'm not playing Peanut today. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, why we're on the. I think it's, it's going to be a DC show. Yeah. Uh, this is our DC show. Uh, why we're on the subject. Uh, the next thing we're going to talk about is the DC Universe reboot. Correct. I think we we purposely it's not happened yet. It's not happened yet. We purposely wait. We did. We purposely waited because we were trying to go into it with an open mind. We didn't well, wait. Let's start off real quick. Flashpoint. Okay. Flashpoint. Flash point yes. Hit. I might have been wrong. <laughs> I yeah. didn't want to admit I was kind of upset with all the books, which. That part, I still not wrong. There's too many books, twenty some books in one month, and that leading me up to what's happening next in September. Right. This is a lot of books. This is, for those that don't know, and I, if you watch the show, you know what's going on. But we'll recap. Um, in September, uh, the the heads of DC comic books have decided not just to restart a book or two. We're restarting the universe. And they haven't done something like this since zero. No. And this isn't going to be quite like zero way way I interpret. This is actually we're doing another yeah. universe with zero. When everything started over, we still had the all original costumes. They didn't change yeah. much. It was just like a, a jumping point. But what DC's doing now is a radical. We're we're starting everything. And I don't know. Um, what do you think? Here's what I think. This is this is my. I'm opinion. gonna let Mike go first because you guys will. Be totally impressed. With Here's what I, what I think. It doesn't matter what I think. It's going to happen. Yeah. I can. I'm going. I'm going to be blunt. I can bitch and moan with all the rest of the people on the internet till I'm Sinestro pink in the face. <laughs> it's not going to change the fact that it's going to happen. Granted, we've seen how the power of the internet has progress has affected and it changes things. Yes. Side note: the Wonder Woman TV show that never happened, which sucks. But the fact that when they first introduced the Wonder Woman costume, the fans were in an uproar. Guess yeah. what? It worked. It changed. Didn't make a difference because no. the show's not happening. But it did inside change. This ain't going to work. This ain't going to happen with this. This is this is too big of a project. Yeah. It's happened. It's it's in the can. It doesn't matter what's going to happen. I have to go into it with like a lot of fans. I'm not going to sit there and go, oh, I'm done with you. I, 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 but there is going to be a lot of people. There is going to be a lot of people. There are going to be a lot of people. I'm going to give it a chance. I'm going to go into it with open eyes. Um, I think the problem is, is DC's doing it for the right reasons. Yeah. The comic book paper industry is not as strong as it was. It's, it's not. I hate to say it. It's, it's yeah. slowly done. They're trying to inject some adrenaline into it. This was about the only way. This is their direct push to digital. Exactly. And the problem is, is I think it's a good idea, but I think it's it could hurt as much as it helps. Yes. Um, did you read that article from Wired Magazine? No. Okay. Um, if you get there's a real good article, Wired Magazine just had it in the newest issue that just came out. Go to our Facebook page. There's a link to it. Mm -hmm. Read that. It's really interesting what's going to happen with digital. Yeah, and I've been to a lot of digital panels at conventions. Go to back and go through our archives. The Cincinnati Comic Expo had a great one on uh, digital comics. It's from some of the people that's doing digital right now. Yeah. Watch that. Um, there's other ones I filmed too. That was from Middle High Con. Watch that one. Digital is happening. Digital is happening. It's it's not the fad I thought it was going to be. Like when when 3D first made big. Everybody was all. Oh, it's all about the three D, three D movies, three D TV. Guess what? We're over it now. Are and you reading digital yet? No, I'm not. I I'm old school. I w I'm a stubborn old bastard. I'm not that old, but my thing is though. It's the same reason why I, buy, buy, I won't buy a Kindle ever. I like books. I love the feel, the smell, the texture. I love having a book in my hand. I love being able to file my comic books away and see my big wall of pride, of geek pride. I can't see five years from now somebody being proud of, no, 
Look at my comic collection. Oh, look at that. Oh, I got 500 files on here. Oh, look at that. How impressive. I'm no. started. I, I liked it for the idea of what it is, but for, I'm old. I'm I'm old school. I, I need a book. This is so cool, though. Like for me, after my job, I can sit there on 15 minute break. I, I can read a book. I get that. I really do. Actually, lunch. You're sitting there at that uh, McDonald's eating your hamburger and reading a comic. No greasy pages. <laughs> True. And you know what? It might be subject for me to change. It might in another five years when I can afford a tablet and I can have you know the better. A page, a bigger size, a page I mean, size is page. Small people. It might change, but for me right now, I appreciate for what it's for. I think it's going to it's going to stretch out to a lot more people. Yeah. Not everyone has access to a comic book shop, but everybody has access to iTunes, DC dot com, Marvel dot com. Yeah. I get that. The the upstart companies that's uh, graphically, who I know a couple people there. That's really a good way. Um, comic College. Yes. That's I think is a way because like this this very minute, uh, Wonder Woman special is going on. by all yeah. Wonder Woman's for ninety nine cents. I mean, I can see where they're doing. I can they're, see they're where they're I really can't, and I can see where it's going to be a big boom for the independent artists. Yes, because you know we go to cons we know a, lot, a lot. We know a lot we, of indies. We know a lot of indie people. We know a lot of people who are really talented, who really deserve that break. That aren't getting it. Aren't getting it. That. If one kid in California could read one independent guy's book from Ohio and then spread the word to his friends and buy more. And buy more, it's gonna take off. Whereas if if this guy spends his time and money printing a book and putting it on the shelf here at Alter Ego It might not sell. It might not sell. I mean especially, you know, it just it's a better way to reach your target market. Right. And I think you know, and I don't see that flooding happening either. In no, visual. you can have as many as you want. Right. And I think that's where they're coming up with this fifty-two. Exactly. It, it's all going to be out there. There's going to have tons of taste. And the thing that I'm going to be shocking a lot of people right now, I don't think continuity needs to exist anymore. I think really? moving into the digital world, as long as you have a great writer, a great artist, mm -hmm. and they can do a good story, it can fit anywhere. True. Yeah. I think seeing someone that wants to dig out something from way back, who is a big fan, and they're a great artist, a writer, and they want to do a story, say set on Earth Two, let them do it. Yeah. I don't see this whole uproar starting over and everything. Well, yeah, it's neat, but you can reinterpret. Just look what JMS just did with Superman last year. Yeah. I mean, that was totally in another else world or what if world. Yeah. Who cares anymore? It was a yeah, good, great it was a good story. story. Yeah, and uh, we've we've tooted Earth One on the show before, and I'll take this chance to say again: if you haven't picked up Earth, uh, Superman Earth One, that's good. I think that's the other reason why I'm disappointed in the idea of the reboot is because I thought Superman Earth One was the precursor for the reboot of the universe. It sort of. I thought I really I did. I think it gave them the idea that they could do this. Yes, like people and, are interested in it, and going in different directions. Yes. Just to me, just go anywhere you want. Yeah. I, I, the floodgates open. I mean, look at Marvel. They're starting to do this. Yeah. Marvel is doing this a lot more, and it's more subtle. I mean, look at Iron Age that just came out. Yeah. I mean, this is going to be a whole other little pocket universe. You have every single little pocket universe in the X-Men universe. You, you know, Age of Apocalypse, yeah. House of M. And not He's, every not every book has to cross over with every other right. book. And just what was it? Legacy just came out. Yeah, that was it's, it. Was only tied in like two books, mm -hmm. which was very impressive. Mar Marvel could have every single book of X Men could be tied together. Yeah, they didn't do it. They kept it really s small, big but small. And, right. And to me, is I almost rather read one shots now. I do. I novels. Yes. I mean, I'm not a big graphic novel fan. Don't. Collection graphic novels, mm -hmm. original graphic novels. Yes, I would buy a big hardback book and read it, or have mini series, four issues, three issues, yeah. six issues, a twelve issue. I mean, look at Hush came out a while back. Right, that didn't take place in any universe. I mean, give me no. A, I yeah. mean that nowadays, I just say, throw away you fanboys who die hard loves Earth Two. I mean, that's totally gone now from existence. Right, but why not? Have it someone who wants to bring back 
uh, Huntress as Batman's daughter. I mean, why can't we have right. a story like that? I know it'll throw people's minds and you, people get confused, but who cares? It's a good story. You could do something with it. You could do stories set on Earth S, Earth whatever. Who but, cares? But would you rather see it be that as as the the new reboot or as a series of Elseworld books? Not, yeah, not even necessarily a series. It's just good storytelling. You still characters. You own the copyrights to these characters. I know you can't distinguish them too much because they keep the copyrights alive, right. keep the trademarks alive, keep this, you know, that's marketing side. You have to keep that because people right. want to fringe on you and all this. I understand totally that. But you can go and reinterpret. You can bring Superman in jeans, like what they're doing here. You know what I'm saying? Let's throw that picture up real quick. But as you can see here, here's, so far there's been, been three different um, sneak previews of the art to come in the DC Universe reboot. And while I'm for the idea of the reboot stories, I'm not digging the art so far. I'm not... Action comics. Action comics. As you can see, here you go. My first thought when I saw that piece of art was I ignored who's writing a book, who's drawing a book. My well, first thought was... It's been, <laughs> my first thought was, okay, so Bibbo Bibowski from the Ace of, you know, the, uh, the Ace of Spades bar is moving to Smallville and becoming Superman. I did. It looked like Bibbo to me. It didn't... I don't think it was so much the jeans and the t-shirt that bugged me. It was what, what, yeah, the, the little bitty cape. Yeah. The, the, I mean, come on, seriously. What, it was not. I don't want to be infant anybody, but it was so effeminate. You know, it was like the looky at my little cape. But then he go to, you know, the uh, Superman that George Prez is doing. And yes. George Prez is oh, to me the greatest yes. artist there is. You know, yeah. and this is superhero. You know, yeah. I mean, what's going on here? Are we going to have multi universes? In the why, reboot? Yeah, if they were doing a reboot of continuity, why are we seeing three different takes on Superman? And Superboy. I and mean, Superboy. Superboy is like a cyborg in Superboy number one. Yeah. You know? But like I said, you know, we had the, the blue jean Superman. We have the god-awful spider armor from the 80s and 90s Superman. I'm sorry, that armor looks like garbage. And then we have the Justice League of America Superman who... They didn't radically change the costume. They took off his his tidy white, you know, his his underoos, which I am not the biggest fan of. And they gave him that that high collar. Yeah. Meh. I liked the Earth One. You know, that's what I think my biggest disappointment was is when I heard they were doing a reboot of Superman. I wanted to see the Superman Earth One universe become the predominant. Well, that's what we even talked about Wonder Woman. Was that yes. part of Earth One? But no, it's some. They're going off on a different, different tangent. And then tangent. Wonder Woman is even coming back before this even happens. Did you see the last cover to the yep. to that Wonder Woman where she's ripping the cover open and then There's she's in her, her old costume? Yeah. It's like, why mm -hmm. even do all this? I mean, that's where I'm saying continuity. Just throw it out the door. That's the other thing too. It's hard to take any faith or face value in the stories that are going on right now. That which I think some of the books right now are the best writing we've seen in a while, like Green Lantern. But the thing about it is, though, right now we're in the middle of we're at toward the end of the Green Lantern War. Right. But I'm also going into it thinking it doesn't matter what happens in another month; it's gone. Yeah. Yeah. Where? Why? Yeah, it feels like sort of changed. Like all the stuff that's been going on, just like uh, Justice League right now of America. It's yes. A whole other team, and then all of a sudden, does that even matter now? Exactly. We're and going to be somewhere else, and it just seems. I don't know. It just seems like we're going to get short changed, maybe. I don't know. A lot of the books that are coming out, we've got, we've got a list. You can find it on the internet of the books that are coming out, and also a list of books that are are not being continued, as far as we know right now. Right. There's talk later. Some right. Stuff. But I want to I want to take a minute, just a second. I'm sorry, Richard. for DC. Don't you take my booster gold away? Well, he's he's going to be in Justice League International, which I like him as a team. And book. Dan Jurgens is writing. And Dan Jurgens is right, and that's why I have faith. But the thing is, though. Uh, amongst like Power Girl, Zatanna, Superboy, and uh, there's a whole bunch of others, and Booster Gold, or some of the individual books that are getting axed. I love my Booster Gold. Since '52, I have had a re reinvigoration of my faith in Booster Gold. I love me some Michael John Carter, and then I find out it's it's some of the best writing we've seen, especially with Rip Hunter. Oh God, the stuff with Rip Hunter is just. 
you know. So does that is that going to be gone? Is it going to be gone? We'll never see it again until there's another crack in the universe. It's and the almost takes yeah. off his mask and oh, there's a whole another universe. It's well, almost like the big thing on the internet right now is that the diehard DC fans like me and myself are being upset that you're killing 50 years worth of history. My thing is. I'm not, not so much. 50. It was redone in '86. Well, yeah. So it's ever since '86. Exactly. The other ones were already destroyed a long time right. ago. Right. But which I lived that. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, they're getting upset that you're taking away my past. Okay, 20 years of history. I'm not that upset by that. You're taking away my last two years. Yeah. You've given me some solid Booster Gold stories. Booster Gold and Booster Gold, the individual title. Uh, Booster Gold and the uh, Justice League Generation Lost, which was if you haven't picked up. Those books, it's in graphic form right now. Justice League Generation Lost. Yeah, that's two part. Two part. Novel. Pick it up. It is phenomenal. And then also the stuff with him and Brightest Day. Right. Uh, what else is Booster? The, oh, the Time Master. Vanishing Point. Vanishing Point. We have gotten some great Booster Gold stories, and then um, also we've got the uh, the solo book of Zatanna, yeah. which was some, this last week's was. Was we talked about earlier yeah. to give us a good one shot book. I can pick up this book, read it. You're you're done. Yeah. That's all you need to know. It was fantastic. I love the the Power Girl stuff. Uh, I I love her individual her solo book because it's it's light. It's fun. Right. That's the way it seems to me like they're doing right now. Perfect. Like I said before, Booster Zatanna, Booster Gold. When they're in their own individual books, they're entertaining. Yeah. They're fun books. They don't take themselves too seriously. But it's nice when you see them in other books. Justice League, Justice Society, uh, what have you. Yeah. We see them kicking some ass. Right. And then the Legion. Yeah. was just now getting back to the way it used to be. And now we're going to have this Legion Lost, which isn't the Legion Lost if you read it a few years ago. This is actually I know, another well, I Legion Lost. Which is going back to the present day time mm -hmm. to try some probably with um, uh, what's his name Cosmic Boy or something. Yeah. Who knows? I mean, when this, I read that, this, that when I knew good. this might be good, it might be bad. I don't know. That's what yeah. the whole thing. I'm not going to say this whole stuff is bad yet because I'm I well I'm not Flashpoint a little too yeah. soon, but it's still too many books and it's just mm -hmm. like this. This is too many books. But yet, if you're trying to get rid of everything from the past and starting over, and you're pushing the digital, yes, I can see. This is the only way you to go. start over. Start with the books. Give you something new. Yeah, maybe. I mean, it's like gangrene. Cut off the leg to save the body. You know, it's it's almost it's it's a horrible analogy, but it's almost this is like cloning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, the thing is, and I've talked to comic book store owners who. They're still on the wall, like everybody else. We're going to give it a chance. I think the downfall is going to be. I understand DC's angle where we're trying to get new readers in, and I understand it. I, it's the best way to do that. But I think the flip side of the coin is, you have people, and I have to admit, like myself, who my pull list is that yeah. big. Who is your new readers, though? Who is your new readers exactly? Like I said, my pull list is that big, and I. Yeah. I know. There's times where I get a book that's in my pull list and I read it and I'm like, why am I still reading this? Yeah. Because I've been reading it for 20 years. I feel like X-Men that way. Exactly. And then it's being canceled. It's being canceled. I read X-Men out of habit. And Incredible I read... Hulks are being canceled. Yeah, I mean, I... all this old stuff, yeah, I can see cleaning house, but yet at the same time, as we originally said, Action Comics hit 900. How many comics have ever hit 900 yeah. besides uh, uh, the British book, uh, 2000 AD? Yeah, I mean that was the first book ever to reach beyond the thousand mark. But, right. But we going off again. Yeah. But American book. I think the downside is too is they see it as a way to get new readers. But the problem is, is it's also going. It's a it's a jumping point for new readers. Hey, everybody, new stories. You don't have to buy comic books for the past twenty years to enjoy these new stories, and it yeah. works. But the problem is, is you've got people like me where not only is it a jumping point for new people, it's also a jumping point to get off of stuff. Right. I don't have to keep buying JLA because of 20 years worth of history. I pick up the first book, I don't like it, guess what? It's gone. It's gone. I pick up, um, I'm sorry to say it, 30 years, Superman. I mean, who can buy all 52 now? This is going no, to be a lot of books. No, they can't. If you're buying Marvel, you're buying Dark Horse, you're buying Image, you're buying IDW, 
how are you going to even pick up 52? I know you're, you're, you're slamming the market. You're trying to right. basically flood the market in a way so that everybody will read your books. But it might it might be a little against you by doing that too. But I don't know. It's, a, it's going to be... This is going to be a changing point. It's in an September. It is. It's an open, swinging door. It's going to bring people in who have never read a comic book, who can who can start now, who can get in at a jumping point. But it's also going to be for people who I don't need I don't need ten books a week. Yeah. It, you know, this is my opportunity to say, done. I'm walking away, Did and it's not going to kill anything. I don't need to buy the next five books to know where. The last five book story is going to lead. Yeah, you know, like the grounded or Superman and the, the grounded issue. Right. Not the best story, but you read it. I read it. I really did because I can't not. I bought Superman books in the mid nineties when the art and the stories were horrible. <laughs> they really. I love Superman more than any comic book, but I bought them because I'd always bought them, and they were bad. And I kept buying them each week out of habit. Like, it's going to get better. Like, every once in a while, you'd get that good story. It's like, this is why I buy a comic book. The next week, it's fucked again. But this is the point where yeah. I can say... I just don't know this is not the right time. It just seemed like they were having yeah. so many good stuff out. See, I yes. could kind of seen what they did back in the 80s when DC did the reboot back in 86, right. 87. Because stories and art were bad across they the board. They were starting to come, you know, and they was going to bring new people in. They brought John Byrne in to redo Superman. Right. They redid Wonder Woman a little later, which kind of was behind. I think that whole starting point back then, they kind of screwed up. And that's when they tried right. to do that, the zero restart, and that didn't work. And they kept going along, and then they just did the reboot vamping of Superman, basically. His yeah. whole origin was redone like with, with the Birthright miniseries. And, and, and the yeah. new miniseries. Right. And it kind of... But yet, I think they were starting to screw up again. And I think that's what they felt. Everything was starting to become rehashed. They brought back Hal Jordan. Yeah. They brought back Barry Allen. They were trying to make it work, and I just don't think it was working. I think they felt the same thing was happening again. again. It's like a, It was like a string with a, the ends frayed. It started off nice and tight, but as the story progressed, it started to do... And it just that and number. And maybe this is the best thing. It could be. We could we could be eating crow ourselves in another well, three months. Where it's I'm like, not really going to knock this. I, I I'm not this either. Happen. I will go into it with open eyes, and I'm hoping. I'm 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 hoping for the best. And it was it was a hard thing because my first thought when I heard any kind of inkling of the new reboot was my first thought was Marvel's Ultimate Universe. Yeah. It's like okay, we're gonna we're gonna, again to use the example. Earth, uh, Superman Earth One, which a lot of people compared to to, Ultimates. to the Ultimates, and you know what? I liked it. If if I could have had my current continuity Superman book here, and my Spider my Superman Earth One book here, just like the Spider Man's normal I stories, both. I read both. I really did, and you know what? I enjoyed both. And there were times where I enjoyed the Ultimates universe a lot yeah. more than. The normal universe, and it it might have kept the same way with. Well, the same thing happened back in the sixties. Yes. Like when they they slid over into Earth, what became Earth One at the time. Earth Two was the forties, fifties books. Yeah. And then they slid over in the sixty became more sci-fi, more right. thing. Uh, Julius Schwartz recreated the whole universe, which I saw. This was really good at that time. I wasn't yeah. alive back then, but I read a lot of the stuff from that time from my dad and stuff. So it was really interesting how this kicked in. And and then I really became a huge, huge fan of Earth 2. Yeah. So when the crisis hit in the 80s, yeah. and they threw all this out the door, I've seen this before. So maybe this time around, I'm not being the same. It's already been thrown out the door once before. Who cares? Continuity just doesn't work. And I mm -hmm. actually think right now in time, continuity doesn't work. I see that at Marvel. Marvel really yeah. doesn't care about their continuity. No. I really don't think they care as much as DC kind of wants to try to. Exactly. Not when you've got... And I know it's it's a cliche, but it's always been an old complaint when you've got Wolverine in nine books. Yeah. How physically can... Not that I don't believe he's in nine teams, but how can he be on... How about Spider-Man right now? How many how many books is he in in the, quote, Marvel Universe, you know? The FF team, the Avengers, his own thing. It just... It logistically... Heroes for hire. Heroes for hire. It logistically just doesn't make sense. Yeah. And I think the thing with DC is I think they were missing out on is we we just in the last couple of years been introduced to the concept of the 52 universes. 
Which they didn't run with. They did not run with. I don't understand it. You, here's Marvel's... And it might not have worked. It might not have worked. Here's Marvel or DC's opportunity to have 52 different universes. And it still might work. It still might work. Because you never know. This might just be Earth uh, 10. Exactly. And, and six months from now, if this experiment... Doesn't work. Doesn't work. Guess Action what? Comics nine oh or nine ten will be out. <laughs> yeah, or wherever they're at by that time. Yeah. So just just look at. It. I mean, that's what happened. To Marvel, Marvel, Marvel keeps bouncing around. You know, they cancel the old books, bring back the old books. If if you're approaching the six hundred and ten issue or no six hundred fiftieth issue, they'll bring that back. Yeah. Celebrate six hundred fifty. So, but I don't think that takes away from it as much either. I don't either. No. I think. To keep your if you're one of these ones that's got your long boxes stacked to the ceiling like Mike and me, um, you know you got issue one down here, issue six hundred up here. You know, it, yeah, it, you got to keep it in some what order. And I know that's what a lot of fan people is going to be really upset about oh, because if you're keeping all this, where does this go? This is one. Where Do does I put it, it before the annuals or after the annuals? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, that's what's blowing people's mind. I think more about this. But now, like you said, put it on here and just read it here, and you don't care. But, that's you know, that's true. <laughs> I, I'm not completely dismissing. I'm not. I'm not dismissing digital at all. I I understand the need for, it and the want for it. And I might be a hypocrite. In another three months, man, I might be all about you know, man, this is great. I yeah, I can you buy your this iPad anywhere. It might, there. it might be, but for me, like right now, I just you know, I'm old school. I like the books. But I, but I'm not. But we're not going to change what's going to happen. We're not going to change what's happening. And I think we made the comparison between the the, the Green Lantern movie and what's happening at DC uh, early in the show. And I think the perfect way to tie it together is go into it with an open mind. Yeah. Don't be one of these Nancy naysayers who, as soon as they saw something on the interwebs, you know, I I did the same thing when Read I saw the art. New. Read it's something new. new. I did the same. I did the same initial thing when I saw the art. I was open-minded until I saw the art for Superman, and then I closed my mind and I'm like, blue jeans, armor, the high collar. But I'm the, the closer we're getting to it, the more open my mind is becoming again, because like with the Green Lantern movie, I didn't get to go opening weekend. I got to go a, d a few days later when the critics were already like, this is garbage. This sucks. Horrible. I mean, even they were doing the little action figure. Uh, if you get a chance to look online, do uh, I'm a Marvel, I'm a DC. They were already ripping it apart. Did I say done over? I it, the critics don't like it. I'm not going to go. No, I still went into it with an open mind, and I left. And you liked it. I liked it, and I'll do the same thing with the the DC reboot. Yeah. So, and then. Um one, one last thing, last weekend at Summit City, we had a great time. There's going to be a lot of footage coming up. Peanut and me went over there. Uh, Zach spot us a table. It was really great. If you stopped by our table, I appreciate it. He picked up our mini books and stuff. He didn't get a chance. Uh, Summit City was a great show at Fort Wayne. So that's basically all I want to say all right. about that. And just watch. We got more coverage from that. We got Midwest Haunters Convention footage coming up. Uh, hope you enjoyed last week the uh, new Comic Day uh, week we celebrated. If you like that, please let us know. We're looking at maybe even bringing another um, web comic to our website mm -hmm. or at least um, linking through. And we just brought in Decapitated Dan's uh, mm -hmm. actually podcast. So yeah. we're going in a little different direction with the website. Um, remember, like us on Facebook and follow us on iTunes. Yep. So, thanks a lot, and I hope you guys continue to have a great summer.